Hello and welcome. What the fuck? God damn it. Oh, stand by. Hello and welcome to Best of the Bottom. We're bottom class people drinking bottom shelf booze. And you think by now I would get my shit together, but this is clearly not happening yet. But we're bottom class people drinking bottom shelf booze. And I am the Reverend JP. Diane. <laughs> You're still not. You know, just Diane. Tell me who you are. Just, just Diane. Just Diane. But tonight, we will be cheersing for charity, as uh, we mentioned last week on Booze and News. There's a local brewery that's been brewing booze for a charitable cause. And we'll also find out, can you smoke or drink? After your COVID vac, COVID, COVID, your COVID vaccine. And please, if you're watching, <laughs> like, share, nad, subscribe. Oh, I tried to fix this right away and it, it didn't work. Uh, Dude, stand by. <laughs> like, share, once, nad, subscribe. Once we start getting those, uh, um, like shave company sponsorships. Yeah. <laughs> like, share, like, and share subscribe. And subscribe. If you're watching us on the use tubes after we are a live version, give us a give us a share, give us a like, subscribe, join the family. And you can also find all of our stuff at Paraco Productions at Paracoproductions.com. It has links to all of our social medias and other channels. And you know, join the family. It's fun. The water's fine. Come on in. We like you guys. I hope you like us. We're needy. <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. At least once a week. I think that's pretty good. Oh, you stream all the time, though. I forget. Yeah. You do all kinds of stuff. I do lots of stuff. I stream. I do the stand-ups, some open mics. I'm a reverend now, so hopefully I can start doing some weddings. <laughs> you know. You got you got to keep income coming. You just got to keep finding new ways to expand. You know, I could even start my own church. I don't know what the church is going to be based on just yet. Like I was telling you earlier, uh, maybe it'll just be orthodox agnostic. Basically, we traditionally have no idea if there's a God. Sounds good. Sounds good. But before we officially get things kicked off, we like to start with a little thing called the... Bag of doom. And in this bag, we have various shots. I go up to the local liquor store and I go, please, clerk, sir, can I have some more? And they go, you wait, hey, what's that line? You can't have any more until you eat your meat. <laughs> How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Yes, that was a Pink Floyd reference. But I have them grab us just some random shots. We reach into this bag, grab some random shots, and then we got to take it. Good, bad, indifferent. We let fate decide because we have no idea if there's a god here. <laughs> that, that was an amazing um, bag of doom. Uh, 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 I, I don't know. I <laughs> just grab forward. Oh, just reach the internet and grab a fucking shot. Okay. It's um, Kiss Caramel. And it's harder than it looks, okay? <laughs> you can cross the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty darn hard to master. And I'm sorry you're so good at it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oop. It's a it fucking disaster. <laughs> oh, Maverick representing. Throwing some penguins out. Ugh. But I have gotten Chila Horchata. It's a cinnamon horchata rum. What was mine? Kissed caramel. Let's find out if it's any good. Cheers to charity. 
to charity. Hmm. 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 Is this better than rum chata? That's I'm not sure. I am not sure. It is a strong contender, has a lovely flavor. It has a little bit creamier flavor than the rum chata does. It's pretty good though. I guess what it would come down to, which one is cheaper? They're both really good. I don't, I, I, I wouldn't kick either one out of bed for eating cookies. Just saying. Um, yeah, I guess C. Yeah. Stay in that bed uh, <laughs> gets caramel. <laughs> it's not super great, but it's not bad either. Yeah. It needs ice cream. I think uh I think it's a top contender for the rum chata. I think this one, like I said, I think this one's a little creamier than the rum chata, but it's pretty good. And now we move on to this week's Florida Man. And these Florida Man segments, what we like to do is we find a Florida Man headline and we don't read the story, we make it up. So, based on what we see in the headline, we come up with a story. And Diane is currently in Feline Park. At some point, things are going to go horribly wrong, and one of them is going to learn how to open the door. <laughs> Kathy's pretty close. But as I was saying, in the Florida Man, we come up with a story. It's a little bit of improv. And in this week's Florida Man, this one's going to be tough. Florida Man tries to pawn his baby. I love it. <laughs> ah. I must really quick put in here. Somebody's recognizing my greatness. I am the lightning god, and I have a story for that to explain that later. <laughs> but in the meantime, a Florida man tries to pawn his baby. Why does he try to pawn his baby? Obviously, this is going to go back to methamphetamines because it always plays methamphetamines. However, however, this Florida man realized he knows he's a meth addict and he realizes it is best to give his baby to a good home. Now, is he aware that you could drop him off at a fire station or a hospital and, you know, be fine? Probably. But does he need a couple of bucks for a gram? Yes. So the next logical step is let's pawn this baby. And hopefully the pawn shop owner is a solid, upright human being and is willing to take this poor, lovely child in and raise it as his own. And give him a couple of bucks so he can fulfill his destiny of eventually, you know, ODing in a ditch. <laughs> this this is the darkest one I've ever done. I'm, I'm trying to put a, I'm trying to put a happy inflection on it, and I don't know if it's working. And suddenly I'm Italian. I don't know. The one spicy meatball. Um. So you know he realized. Yes, you know what? Matt. You know what? See, he actually, this baby was found in a spaceship that crash landed in his meth lab because it's clearly not a farm. And he realizes he does not have the skills to take care of this alien baby that is likely going to have superpowers under the yellow sun. And he doesn't want him to be around this negative atmosphere. You can have a super baby that is also a meth baby. Do you know what kind of horrible things that could happen but since this is an alien baby it's got to fetch a good price at the pawn shop right so this man is just trying to do the responsible thing and give this alien superpowered baby the best chance at becoming a real life superhero 
to benefit humanity instead of growing up in a meth lab in a negative atmosphere. And, you know, this man is actually a saint of methamphetamines. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's a hero oh for God, yeah. all crash landed alien I, babies I, everywhere. I've fallen in love with this story. <laughs> and this is America. So you got to put in the capitalism aspect. So why just surrender the baby for free if you're not going to at least make some sort of a profit, you know, at a pawn shop? It's not the black market, it's a pawn shop. So there is still legal documentation being provided everywhere. He probably took him to like that uh that big um what was that pawn shop that had the reality show? There was two. You had what was the really big one. Pawn Stars was the one on History Channel. And then there was the one out of Detroit, which was uh like I want the yeah, I think that's the one I want. It, it was a really big place and it had the guy with the like balding ponytail. Yes, that was the one in Detroit. I don't remember what That's the hell it was called. If anybody in the chat knows what the hell that pawn show was called, please help me out, because I don't know what the hell it was called. Detroit Pawn? Was that what it's called? <laughs> I would believe it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but this is taking... <laughs> So you're saying this Florida man traveled to Detroit, which honestly, if there is a pawn shop that's going to buy yes, a... He, he, oh. was, he was thinking the... Hardcore pawn. Hardcore pawn, yeah. But if there is a pawn shop that is willing to pay money for a baby, it's probably located in Detroit. Sorry, Detroiters. But you know it's true. <laughs> I feel like... Yeah, he was he was like, that's a really big pawn shop. Like that's the show he watched. He was like, I'll they must be rich. This baby's okay, got tentacles. Yeah. I thought it okay. shoot a laser <laughs> yeah. it, sh it shot a laser out of its eye. <laughs> yes, because it's got tentacles in one eye. I hmm. um Yeah, I don't know. I just love that story. <laughs> I, you're, you're, I love your train of thought. I uh, yeah, yeah. I like your shit. I don't. I don't have anything better. I've fallen in love with the character. I'm like, make the fucking movie. <laughs> Bam. Let's Marvel. Go. Here we go. <laughs> Hit me up. You just just send me a DM. All my social medias are. You can find it at PericoProductions.com. You know, right here. You know. Marvel, if anybody from Marvel's watching, you know, shoot me a DM, shoot me a, an email. I got ideas like this for days, for days. You know, who needs yeah, Superman? We got for sure. Tentacle for Pond Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. I, I don't see why not. Maybe Lifetime. <laughs> we make the first one kind of a you know a heartfelt tale and then we transfer <laughs> into like you know action but I feel like if it's a lifetime movie it would have to be I think I'm it would have thinking, to they've been it, putting out some crazy shit lately like the KFC fucking mini oh. thing they did well, like, see, I think they're down. Here's my thought on a, a lifetime start, flick. Start small. If we did a lifetime, have the danger and the sexiness because it's lifetime, you know. We'd have to do it lifetime. Instead of the man goes to pawn the baby, it would have to be the the mom pawns baby. Like so, the story would start off, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Billy Joe Bob is out in the back meth lab near the swamp and he's cooking up his meth suddenly <laughs> here comes the alien craft takes off side of the roof of the the meth lab blows it up she comes running out screaming did you blow up the meth lab again and he's like oh 
God damn it, Maureen, get your ass in the hit in the house. He goes over and bam, there's the one-eyed tentacle laser shooting baby in the little the little rocket bassinet. He takes the baby out. You know, it slowly develops that, you know, this is a hideous creature, but they still love it. They've been trying to have kids for years, but the methamphetamines has rendered both from completely infertile. You know, it's it's shriveled up the sperm and the eggs like raisins. It's gone. It's done. It's it's toast. Nothing. So they're trying the best they can. And they even decide they're going to kick the meth habit. But they realize as this baby is starting to is maturing faster than they realize, it's realizing that their parents are meth addicts and the daddy keeps beating the mom and he just won't get clean. She's been trying as hard as she can. So finally, she just loses it. And she goes and just all is lost at this moment. She rushes to the pawn shop because she's just trying to get any bit of money so she can get away from Billy Joe Bob and she and Maureen can go live her own life. But she knows she can't take the baby with herself. She's got no money. So if she can at least pawn this poor alien orphan child with tentacles and one eyeball and lasers and it could fly maybe we don't know yet it might just be able to jump really high we're not sure powers are still developing so she's desperate she pawns it off to this lowly pawn shop owner and he looks at the baby and realizes it's ugly but it has potential and he's been training superheroes for years for years so she he accepts this alien baby he finds ways to costume it and disguise it as a real human baby gives her money she's able to leave town and this baby slowly starts to grow up develops powers and the baby starts gaining fame that's when the parents come back and they are desperate to get their child back this three-way custody battle goes because billy joe bob is just in it for the money and the fame he doesn't care about anybody he's just He's just got one tooth left, and it's made out of freaking pewter. He can't even afford gold. Maureen's finally got her life together, and she just wants her baby back, but she does see the potential of having a famous baby. And the poor lowly pawn shop guy is the only one that truly loves this baby. And then in that moment, a giant spaceship begins to hover over the sky. Boom. To be continued. Marvel movie? Bam, something like that. I don't care. That's Valiant, Dark Horse, <laughs> Lifetime to comic book world. You know, first one's lots of drama, lots of very little superpowers. Once that spaceship rolls in, that's your Galactus moment. Boom. A hero is born that day. I mean... I didn't like the lifetime aspect as much as just, you know, I, I Oh, like that that would be a good trauma pick too. You know, maybe Toxie can even make an appearance. Toxie could be the one running the pawn shop. Bam. Toxie's in disguise running the pawn shop. Bam. This movie just writes itself. It's a license to print money. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Perfect. Bam. Right there. God, can't get any easier than that. <laughs> I mean, wow. Watching a master. Thank you, sir. Work. See, you're so good at Florida, man. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I was just like, I was really, you know, going to try for something. But my God, that's amazing. <laughs> well, you just got to keep kicking the and ideas. We've birthed a whole, you know. I mean, this could turn into a whole, well, not just a franchise. This could be, yeah. I mean, next thing you know, we got, you know, multi multiple universes, different versions, alternate realities. Billions, billion dollar idea right there. Mm. For sure. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up the chat. I'm not like texting or I thought is it not sharing the chat with you still? No. Nah. No. Nah. Damn. All right. Does anybody dick have Dickhead Kaufman's phone number? Cause 
bam. We can bring trauma back to the forefront again with that that idea. Just, oh, I'm actually proud of myself. I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that one. <laughs> but you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't have done it without you. I mean, honestly, you're the muse that like gets the gears going. You know, you throw out something and then I just kick it around and then bam, it's just, it's synergy. Can you feel it? Can you feel it in the air tonight? Feel it. Bam. Now, as we made a mention to you a little earlier, tonight's booze that we will be reviewing is not so bottom shelf. Uh, as we mentioned in last week's booze in the news, um, the Icebox Brewery here in Las Cruces has um, started uh, a beer for charity. Um, the charity is Care Cancer Aid Resources and Education. And the beer they're making is called Janet's Bitch and Brown. Um, it was originally created by Mike Tasty McDowell. Ooh. He was uh, the original brewer of this beer. And Justin, the bouge in the news. I'm bougie. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it is bouge in the news. Thanks. That's a good one. So all the proceeds of this beer goes to the charity of care. Cancer aid resources and education and it's specifically focuses on local cancer patients and we report on it last night because uh mike mcdowell actually had passed away from cancer and it's a good way to you know commemorate his memory and one of the things he was passionate about brewing beer and obviously help give back to the community so we are going to be cheersing for charity in this uh, lovely episode. And for two four packs, it came out to 25 bucks. So that's about twelve fifty a four pack. So it's not cheap, but the alcohol per volume is 7.2%. Now, I do not know how much it would cost you if you go to the um, ice house, the ice box, uh, Brewery here, we, there's like three locations. Uh, you got the main one on Picacho. There's another one. There's two on North Main downtown and up on, off Highway 70 area. And I, like I said, I'm not sure how much it costs you per glass in-house. But uh, let's find out how it is. And then we'll jump into this week's actual booze in the news as we're just recapping last week's. Anytime. Sorry. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. This is a hoppy ass beer. <laughs> yeah. I'd say this is like a this this has more of an IPA style to it because it's hoppy as fuck. Uh more than ale. It's got a little bit of bitterness like to it. That. It's got it's a little good. bit. It's like it's got the bitter, but it doesn't have that extra stinginess to it. And like, it, I feel like it's the right amount of bitter. Yeah, it's not skunky. It it's not fucking up the back of my throat. <laughs> like it tastes pretty good. But it is packed full of flavor. I will definitely say I'm not, I'm definitely going to say this may not be an everyman's beer. If you like the hoppiness, it is 100% yours because you get hit with the hops really hard right at that first sip. And then it kind of mellows out and then you'll get that kind of bitteriness to it. But I don't like, yeah, but I feel like first sip was kind of a shock. And then after yeah. I took the second one, I was like, this is my shit for sure. But I think good, I though. just didn't know what to expect. Yeah, I wasn't I really... sure what to expect either. Because but it's like, being a, a brown ale. I was expecting more of a. I feel like it's I, pretty mellow, though. 
I don't know. I think it's pretty flavorful. I was expecting like Well, it's like it's flavorful, but it's not like like Shiner Bach. I don't know if you would compare the two. But like No. I, I would say this like a, this has more flavor than a Shiner Bach does, but that's different. I'm trying to think, trying to think of some of the ales. Like not like flavor, like I don't know, but like I don't like it. I don't like it when the beer feels like it's punching me. You know, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe it, but like that's the best. Like this do. beer does not punch you. <laughs> it does not punch me in the back of the throat. Like it has like it has the taste without like I don't know. It it, do, it doesn't use your uvula like a speed bag. No, <laughs> it holds it, it caresses it in a non making you want to vomit kind of way, you know. That's pretty, pretty cool. good though. <laughs> it's an enjoyable yeah. beer. I really like it. I actually feel like I could chug this. You don't? Uh, you don't think so? I mean, you can I probably chug really it. Like it. Because to me, a beer is a beer is a beer. Maybe it's just, you know. It definitely has. We're fighting cancer that is coating my taste buds. <laughs> and making it's, me just believe that this is like the best the, darn beer I've ever It's tasted. the extra love that was put into brewing this beer. It's good, though. I would definitely. Um, if I'm at the ice box, I would definitely. If they got it on tap, definitely order it again. And I still got two more for later. I love everything about this beer. Like, I love the name. I love the taste. I like the cause, you know. I like the hoppy wreath. The hop wreath. I am, um... It definitely... It it definitely... It keeps getting better with every sip, too. It does. I'm telling you. Like first, for at first, first sip, I was shocked because I also didn't know what to taste. But then it just kind of, you know, I don't know. It's it like tastes. A romance novel. It has kind of <laughs> that that bitterness of a Guinness, but without that chocolatey undertones. Maybe that's why I like it. I don't like chocolate. Hmm. And then it's got that IPA hop. So I think I think they blend together really well. They're pretty damn good. Like I said, it's definitely worth checking out. If you're at the ice box or you want to get a, a four-pack to take home with you, like I said, I mean, it's a microbrewery, so you're, you're going to be spending a little bit more money whenever you go to microbreweries. But the flavor is usually going to be much better because for one you're getting it like a lot fresher you know what i mean it hasn't been sitting around in the aluminum cans for months on end in the warehouse getting all kind of that funky stank up in there all that alzheimer's aluminum and then you know you go home and drink it i don't know they say aluminum may cause alzheimer's i'm just adding to the conspiracy for no reason at all <laughs> no reason <laughs> But it, it it's it's a solid ale, and I've already yeah, drank I, I've already drank half of it. No, I'm still I, you know I keep going back for it, but I guess I'm baby sipping because I haven't <laughs> drank too much. But it's pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not even I'm not even lying because <laughs> I told I told Mike or boyfriend or uh, Maverick. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Are you okay there? Did you hit the bong real quick? No, I, I, I wish. <laughs> um, no. But um, I was just like, once we agreed to, like, try this, and that set in, I was like, you know what? If this sucks. <laughs> I feel really shitty for shitting on this <laughs> beer because I'm like I I like the cause I like the idea. If this sucks, I'm 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 gonna have to you know. <laughs> that would be that would be horrible. You take a sip and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> my, this is the God. worst beer ever. <laughs> no, it's it's but actually I, pretty good. Yeah. Like I said, pretty um. 
Now, could I afford to drink this on a regular basis? No. Because <laughs> I'm broke as fuck. Would I drink it on a regular basis if I could afford it? Probably. Now, I don't know if there's I mean like a... I don't know if there's a limited time run on it or if they're just going to keep it around and just always have it there. I have I I did not see any specifics on that. But if it sticks around, I'm cool with it. Like I said, I'd I'd be more than happy to drink this again. I definitely I'd like to see it actually sold in in some of our local liquor stores as well or even regional since they do all their in-house brewing. I think it'd be I think it'd be pretty freaking awesome. Hopefully one day it'll make its way out there. And raise even more money to help those in need. Cuz cancer is a bitch. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> now. Would you like to know if you can drink and smoke after your COVID-19 vaccination? Because in Booze in the News, we got some answers. Beep, 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 I keep saying I'm going to make a graphic for it and everything. Haven't even sat down to try yet. One of these days. One of these days. We'll have a graphic for Booze in the News. This is coming from Tucson.com. Such a generic name, but sure. But I guess uh, some of the Department of Health and County health workers that have been doing some of the COVID-19 vaccinations, a lot of things they've been asking is, can I smoke weed afterwards? Can I go have some beers afterwards? And... Nobody necessarily had the answer, but the answer is, yeah, why not? COVID vaccine and booze and weed is compatible if anybody's worried about it. Um, I mean, to be honest, I got my COVID vaccine and the second dose. Actually, I did the first and the second dose. And then we did a podcast, podcast. That, that night and it didn't affect me at all. I mean, granted, I will say on round two of the COVID um, vaccine, I think I got the Moderna, I think is the one I got, or did I get the Pfizer? I don't fucking remember. It was one of those two that I got, and I had 24 hours of some COVID-like symptoms. I felt kind of feverish, felt really like malaised. And that was like shortly after we did the podcast. I went and laid down, fell asleep for a little bit, and woke up feeling kind of crappy. And then on, I felt fine. A second. Did you say malaised? Malaised. What does that mean? It means it means I've it means, never heard that word before. <laughs> you never okay. That no. just means that means you just kind of you don't feel great, you just feel a little sleepy, you don't have a lot of energy, you're just kind of like the Malaise is just like went malaise, and then I was like, no, 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 don't let that go. Malaise. <laughs> no, yeah, malaise is just like you don't feel great. You just kind of you don't feel fully sick, but you just kind of feel like just run down. Mm. So that's kind of how I felt for about Next 24 podcast. hours. I had a little bit of a word. what? Next you podcast, I'll be using that word. <laughs> I'm just feeling malaise. Today. <laughs> I felt a little malaise today, just not feeling it. But yeah, so I didn't feel that great for about 24 hours. And then once it was over with, I felt fine. And we drank plenty. And actually, was that the night that we did the Four Locos? I don't remember. I don't remember if that was the night that I drank more than I should have. But either way, I turned out fine. Look at me. I'm a reverend. I have a trustable face and title. See, reverend. Now back to the COVID-19 vaccination. <laughs> but 
a Dr. Elizabeth Connick had actually said uh, moderate amounts of alcohol actually help the immune system too. So, you know, you get your COVID vaccine, you know, have a couple glasses of wine. I mean, it might just be helping the situation. Now, it does say, obviously, you know, excessive amounts of alcohol is not beneficial because, you know, moderation is key in pretty much most situations. Drink a shit ton of alcohol, that's going to not have such great effects. Now, it's not necessarily saying it's going to affect the shot itself or the vaccine, but in the long run, you know, you go get the shot, you decide you want to go celebrate. Go lick some doorknobs and windows with your friends at the local pub. You're good to go. Maverick just wants to do the one shotter. You know, I'm not going to blame you. Sometimes a single shooter is just fine. That's all you need in life. You know, we're not going to blame you for being a lightweight. But now I, I don't blame you because it sucks having to do the two shot because you got to you get the one. And they got to make sure you go back in three weeks and get the next one. And like I said, the next one wasn't too bad. So you're hearing it here. I don't know if you're hearing it first, but it's official. They're saying, you know, according to at least Dr. Elizabeth McCormick from uh, the University of Arizona Infectious Disease, you'll be fine smoking your re smoking the reefer. And getting your drink on after your COVID vaccine. And you'll be good to go. And now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, go get your COVID vaccine. You probably should. I mean, I understand if some people want to wait a little bit and kind of see how things go. I understand that. Fine. That's your prerogative. Um, but, you know, once people are getting vaccinated, hopefully we can start opening shit back up. I know everybody's got a bunch of conspiracy theories about vaccines and everything else. And I'm going to be honest with you. The main reason why I got my COVID vaccine was for the podcast. I did it for you people. <laughs> and just, I was like, oh, I am going to, you know, get the COVID vaccine right away. Cause I got mine early on because I'm a healthcare worker. I'm considered essential. Ew. Cause it's bougie in the news. I mean, I got mine early on, and you know, I was I thought I'd share my experiences, and honestly, my experiences weren't all that exciting to share with you. Like, if I had like really shitty after effects and just felt lousy, I was gonna tell you guys, but I didn't. It was actually a non story, unfortunately, especially because after you know my first experience with COVID, I gained superpowers. I was hoping you know maybe I'd be able to levitate, but damn. I'll have to wait a little longer. One of these days, I will be able to turn to a llama and blow bubbles for real. One I mean, of these I totally days. I totally believe it. I sense in your story that there is going to be a development. <laughs> One of these days. I'm going like, to get struck by lightning and turn to a llama. Well, that's that's definitely happening. But also, like, <laughs> you, you just have the character that, like, like the kind of comic book character that always ends up getting some kind of new something or other, whether it's like you get some sort of alien virus or like you get <laughs> some sort of like force that passes down to you, you might, I don't know, but you, you have the possibility for a lot of superpowers. Well, thank you. As, as my only superpower, I feel it. <laughs> Your only superpower to sense other superpowers. Yep. Pretty lame. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your support. I can't fight. I can't do nothing. All I can do is go, you know what? You can blow bubbles, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and turn to a llama. You get struck by lightning. You are a llama. <laughs> <laughs> but we still don't know if I'm actually a villain. I would probably be yeah. more of an anti-hero type, you know. I mean, the way the way you keep suggesting that you don't know if you're a hero tells me that like you're gonna betray me at some point. 
<laughs> just, he, he's just working on it, but we don't know. And I'm like, look, I'm the one who's telling you. I'm telling I'm gonna, you your destiny as far as superpowers. I'm gonna blow a bubble, and lock you in it for at least 200 years, and you know, one day your full powers will develop and we'll have an epic battle on top of a mountain and then realize we're both fighting for the same outcome all along What's and then some that? giant monster will erupt from the earth and a new battle will begin because that's how you sell comic books so one of us has to die who dies Nobody ever officially dies in comic books. I know exactly, but which one of us in this case? I feel like I die. The story has not been I'm written. Just, <laughs> I'm just a lowly, I'm just a lowly, like, uh, I'm just a lovable girl with the headset who just goes, you know what? I can feel your superpowers. This is what you do. And then you're like, oh, yeah, fuck you. Well, that's, that, that, I well, I just said, you get what locked you in a bubble for five. Fun- I'm convinced that you're vanquished because you're locked away in a bubble for 500 years. That I also bury at the center of the earth. I'm in a bubble and at the center of the earth? Well, you can't be too careful. I mean, I guess. I mean, the superpower is only just (laughs) saying words, but cool. Center of the earth, I'll take it. You know, and then honestly, it might be Florida man that erupts to the center of the earth. And we have to do do battle with that tentacle lasered one-eyed baby. Bam. There we Boom. go. Boom. Full circle. It just it it just comes that easy. Just comes that easy. Ugh. Yeah, you got the you got the mind uh jogging since you <laughs> Yeah. It's just it's fun times. So I've fallen down a rabbit hole recently. I'm moving past Bo's the news. We're just gonna talk about random shit. I honestly, yeah. look, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I did not have any topics prepared for tonight's show. Normally, I try to come up with some topics and we'll kind of run through it. I've been running my ass off. My kids moved out of the house. I'm going through empty nester syndrome. It's just wait, oh, did, oh, Matthew, oh. did all of them move out? Well, Matthew decided he wanted to go back to his mom's for a little bit because Matthew was staying here because him and Jesse were fighting all the time. But now that Jesse's got his own house, I thought he'd go back to his mom's because I work nights and he doesn't like to have to be here at night by himself, which I don't blame him. So he's back at his mom's. He's still he's going to have his bed. He's going to have a bed and stuff here, too, so he can come back whenever he wants. So he'll have officially a room at both places. So, it's just me, Mallory, Trippy, and the cats. So, I have two empty rooms. I'm so burpy. I know I have I to point the, it out every time, but like I am. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this 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 ale does make you a little extra burpy. Because I feel like I'm just like I don't know if you can hear my throat growling from like trying to suppress. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I'm trying to be a lady, and I I, I hope you all respect that. <laughs> I respect I respect your cause. Thank you. But yes, yeah, so every has moved out, and I've been trying to. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Like one since Jesse, because Jesse decided to move out, and I I kind of expect that it actually happened sooner than I thought, because he turned 18, and he kept saying, "I'm moving out, Dad. I'm moving out." You know, he kept telling us that he's going to get his own place and move out right away, and. That kid's when he sets his mind on something, he does it. That kid's got drive. Like once he decides he's doing something, he's gonna keep. He's gonna do it. Like the kid, he's he's got a job at White Sands Missile Range. You know, he's got a pretty good job for his first job, and then he's moved out right away. He's got a pretty decent little apartment. He took Thor with him, so now Thor and Trippy don't fight anymore. Which they, it's it's always been kind of a they get along for a little bit, then they fight and they get along. But yeah, so Jesse moved out, and then I got home one day from work, and Matthew moved all his stuff over. So it was kind of a 
a little shock to me. And I went through this little moment of nobody loves me anymore. They're all abandoning me. But I, I, I get the reasons why he wanted to go back to his mom's, which is fine. And so he, he, he went next door. So, yeah, but not, they live next door to each other. <laughs> yes. <No lie. laughs> so basically, yes. just. Yeah, so it's not like Matthew like ran off to, you know, thousands of miles away. So he, he's just next door, and then he can come over here whenever he feels like it. And but now that I got some extra spaces, I'm gonna set up a room and do like a a game night every once in a while because I've been wanting to get into some of these board games because I've been watching uh some of these board game channels and I've discovered some new games that look a lot of fun. So I think that'd be fun to do, and then uh. Now I got a separate room that's going to be just for the YouTube channels. So hopefully here soon, we'll be cranking out a bunch of YouTube stuff. I got I got some Karen stuff going on. You know, we've already done the bottom class drink specials. So I'm going to keep trying to do those weekly. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do for the bottom class drink special this week. Um, last week, I made jello shots using a red Moscato, raspberry jello, and... Uh, some of the leftover uh, caliber vodka. That turned out pretty damn good. And then the week before that, obviously, I, we did the podcast with the uh, infused vodkas. And I'm going to do some more of that stuff. You know, so that's going to be that's going to be fun and be able to be more of a, a regular thing now. Um I want to try to infuse some other stuff. I'm thinking about trying to make like a jalapeno margarita, but I don't know if I have enough time because I'm going to have to infuse the jalapenos for probably a week. So I'm going to have to come up with a, a shorter video for this uh, this week. I just don't know what I'm going to do. If you have any ideas, any cocktail ideas, put them in the comments or shoot them in the chat. I'm trying to come up with something that would be fun to do yeah so i've just been trying to come to terms with oh. all my kids getting old i know i i found out and i was just like i had a moment of uh i don't know what you would call it because um i was telling boyfriend that you, like uh like i'm having a moment in life where you realize you're having a moment in life <laughs> you know, like oh life is happening people are trying to have kids like like pe like my nephews are moving out of the house they're all freaking grown like you know just life stuff you know like i've being away from home i notice you know my parents are aging yeah like I feel like I see every fucking wrinkle on their face every time I come home and I'm like, holy shit, you're getting old. Like, I'm in a place <laughs> where it's just like, you know, like, I'm very much aware that, like, life is happening, you know? Yeah, you're just suddenly kind of realizing I'm so like, much stuff is happening and changing so fast. It's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm happy to be aware of it. And I'm like, but at the same time, I'm just like, oh, my God, it's overwhelming sometimes <laughs> just to think that, like, because I really do believe, like, because I used to believe that, you know, like, life happens, shit happens, like, people grow apart. But, like, I think this pandemic has taught me that, like, if you want, if you want to put the effort in and you care about the relationship, you will. Yeah, like, if you definitely like I used to be a person who's like you know people just drift apart and it's fine and it's just a part of life but it's really just like you made the conscious decision not to do this anymore whether not maybe not conscious but you made the decision like at some point you went I'm not going to bother texting at some point you went I'm not going to bother you know like it's 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 like I just I don't know I feel like I don't know. I'm more aware of my life than I've ever been. <laughs> my life. Honestly, like I've been accused of being just oblivious to shit. Cause I really am like, I'm, I'm a person 
I have like OCD and so much anxiety that sometimes I just like, like I, I can't, like I have blinders on sometimes. It's just like, do what I need to do, whatever. Like the other day, like my parents came um, to El Paso and they were like, hey, can you tell us where this restaurant is? And I'm like, I have no freaking clue. Like, <laughs> and it was right next to the liquor store that I go to to buy booze for this. So I could at least go every freaking Monday, you know? And I've never once looked to see what was next to it. I keep such, my head great, down. such great situational awareness. Uh, yeah, I have none of it because in my head, I'm just like, I have situational awareness within the particular situation. You know? Yes. Like, I'm like, I'm going to um, the store. Like, I'm very aware of people around me. Like, I'm I'm not, it's not like I'm oblivious to that, but I'm oblivious to everything outside of the task. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, I just noticed, I don't know. I'm like, I'm starting to notice more things about myself and I'm starting to notice like life's happenings. Well, it just proves that point, too. Past the age of, I mean, it's not until the age of 25 that your frontal cortex is not fully develop. You're past 25. And the growth of you as a human being has changed drastically in the last really couple of years. I think at 25 is where you like your brain officially makes that switch from like adolescence to full, all right, I'm an adult now. It's time to, you know, do shit properly. I think that's what happens. I also also found out, you know, once I heard that that's the case, like I also put a lot of pressure on myself to grow as a person by that time. You know what I mean? Like once I heard like, that's like, at like, and there was a scientific thing. Like it wasn't like, you know, oh, you're growing up when you have kids, you grow like it was like a scientific something that like it's just proven your brain is not fully there until you hit this age. So for me, it was like by then I have to have some sort of something or else my life is truly fucked. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I have, like some kind of sort of growth. Oh. Because I'm like, Definitely. that's when you, that's when you understand. And if, if uh, like in my head, it was like, if I don't, if I don't grow by then, I'm fucked. Or if I haven't emotionally, if I don't emotionally meet that level by at least 26, you know what I mean? I'm like 25, I'll grow into it, you know? Like, <laughs> it, it was like, I did feel some pressure to be like, I'm going to be the best I can be as far as, you know. Well, that's good. I mean, like, honestly, I look back in my 20s and I was a fucking moron. <laughs> I just, I think about so, I, I, I do, I think a lot back to like my ideals and what I thought was important back then. And I'm like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, you were such a oh stupid God. ass. I know. I used to tell, I, I was thinking about this the other day and I, I, I was always like a kid who's like, I'm hardcore. Like, you know, like, I'm, like, I do whatever's, like, punk rock, and I'm, like, I'm fucking cool. Like, I I thought it was so fucking hardcore to tell people the passwords to your shit. (laughs) I'd be like, yo, my Facebook password is this. Go fucking nuts. You know, like, I thought I was being bad at it. I don't know, that's that's hardcore. That's that's just reckless. stupid it's just stupid. <laughs> like, I don't have any any anymore but i just remember thinking i'm hardcore yo there's so much here's the passwords to all my shit you take it over post weird shit mm. Ugh. i was i was just like i don't know i was, <laughs> I, was just like, oh, I was a menace i, I was awful like, i don't know how i had friends i don't know how <laughs> um, like it's bad <laughs> I used to not listen to like any kind of music that was slow like that was a rule I had. oh like, yes that was music. my thing too like never when I was all punk rock like I remember when Green Day came out with the Nimrod album and they had uh, uh fucking 
time of my life on there. And I was like, oh, oh these bitch ass fuckers sold out. Oh, that's not punk rock. Oh, that's not. I listened to it as I got older. I'm like, oh, that's a good song. <laughs> I listened to it a lot. Like, the only acoustic that I deemed worthy in my life was it had to be Sublime or Nirvana was the only thing that was acceptable in acoustic. Everything else had to shred. You had to break shit. You had to, you know, had to be a drug-fueled rage. Oh, yeah. Like, I... Oh, and, like, don't bring that pop shit my way. Don't you talk about Spice Girls. Now oh, I'm over here. I love the Spice Girls. I have never... That was <laughs> that I could never, you know... I could never get past was like I love the Spice Girls. Yes, uh, pop punk band was Green Day, but the the that whole the like I was all about the album Dookie and but Nimrod with that whole time in my life was terrible. It upset I me see. greatly. The takeaway from this is like he was that person in the first place. To be honest. yes, oh, yes. <laughs> like, but um, but no, good. I just yeah, I love folk music. I love a good banjo, dude. Oh yeah, a, a solid banjo. banjo. You would have like, told me I was in a banjo girl when I was younger. The only Fuck. thing I'm gonna say, the only thing that I have not opened my my heart to is country music. I've tried. If I got a banjo, I I'll give it a go. But <laughs> it was it was just it was it was not for me. It just I I could not I could not I just I couldn't stand country music. And to this day, I guess actually you know what I take that back. My heart has opened slightly to country music. Because I can listen, well, Johnny Cash is kind of in a separate category. I'll listen to Johnny Cash. I'll listen to a little bit of Willie Nelson. I listen to uh, those couple of Merle Haggard songs that I got down to. There's one Kenny Chesney song that I like. One. One and only one. There's like a handful that I can tolerate, but it's it's not much. Like country music makes me angry and I want to punch somebody when I listen to country music. And I and I, I think honestly a lot of it comes down to simply to psychology of when I was a child. So because you know yeah, I mean, grandma and grandpa are all into the country music. And when I was little, they always made me go to these little country hoedowns and they had friends that had farms and ranches and they would have like country bands there and local artists and none of the country kids wanted to hang out with me. So I was always rejected and had to sit in the corner by myself. So every time I hear that little twang on the country guitar, I just feel I'm filled with rage and I just, and disappointment and sadness all at the same time. And to this day, if I hear country music for a long time, I, I, some of my partners, they know my feelings on country music that I work with. And I'm like, oh, okay, you have one hour of country music and then I have to change it because you know how I get. I just, I just, it just fills me with anger. Like I just feel just horrible content, contempt towards everything when I hear country music. Horrible content. <laughs> contempt. So I can't even believe it. I want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it just it's 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 horrible i just to this day there's only a select bit of country music that i can tolerate and enjoy or well, tolerate or enjoy maverick said country is cool pop country is not I yes totally... and then he just said every time he's with me he's gonna play country music it's a bad idea <laughs> it's a bad idea I was like, oh, <laughs> I get, <laughs> Johnny Cash always, maybe, but you know, always. Like I said, I have oh, so, I select country. You know what? I'm just not going to say what country music it is. So that way, maybe he'll just accidentally play the stuff that I can tolerate. But like, for the most part, like, I respect a lot of country music artists, I respect their dedication to their art. But Florida Georgia line that is some of the worst country music ever made. 
Oh, it disgusts I me. Really like Pistol Annie's, honestly. That I is mean, Miranda Lambert and two other broads. I don't know. <laughs> Miranda <laughs> Lambert and two other broads. Uh, I mean, no, no disrespect, but honestly, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, just like I don't know because to me, they're like Deborah showed me. They were that was like our country party music. I don't know. It just has a special place. In my oh, heart. yo, hang on. I do not like any of the Dixie Chicks music, but they are cool because they are liberal country chicks and they were so hated by their own community, but they stood by their own decisions. So they are punk as fuck. Bam. I don't oh, know. He just said they're more punk rock than Green Day for sure. I just agreed with that. All right. Yeah. For once, we're on the same wavelength here. Yeah, dude, Dixie Chicks are the hardest punk band in the country world. And actually, punk, you know, this is metal. Ah. Uh, That's all my first beer. I'm almost done with my first beer. I don't know, we've been talking. We, I, I mean, that's fine. I just feel like I'm not in the... I mean, I, like, we're actually, you know, <laughs> having back and forth. Yes. So I'm not as focused on, like, getting this booze just, you know, inside me. <laughs> no, it's it's tasty booze. I've been drinking it periodically because I'm just enjoying the, the, the fuck out of this beer. This is just, uh, this is this is a lovely little kickback right here. This is what this is. This, you know, this is, this is, this is a gathering, you know, it's a gathering podcast. It's just a handful of us here. Just chilling, just enjoying it, and talking about music, life, and you know that's this is a quality conversation. That's what life is about, you know, growing as human beings. Now I'm getting all soft. Bam, that sucked. <laughs> it's all the love in the beer, dude. It's getting. To it me. is. It's the love. <laughs> it's it. This is the beer that does not make you want to punch somebody. It makes you want to hug somebody. Oh, for sure. Oh, no gathering of the juggalos. And actually, to be honest, all right, here's my feelings about the insane clown posse, okay? So, once again, going back to when I was younger, I had one of my friends. It was a hardcore juggalo. He was all about it. He loved the insane clown posse. So he got me into the insane clown posse. To this day, I, will, I enjoy listening to insane clown posse. I just don't like other people hearing me listen to Insane Clown Posse just because like, I like the music, but some of the fandom is just a little bit. Yeah, the fan base is the worst. <laughs> it really is. It's yeah. just like, like like Insane Clown Posse, I like their their music is just so off the fucking wall, just ridiculous shit. They just say whatever the fuck they want to say. And I appreciate that kind of attitude. I really do. Because I kind of do the same thing. Not to the quite same extent. I have, I, I don't have feelings towards necrophilia other than I'd pass. But, you know. <laughs> I have feelings, but I <laughs> They... You know, I just, I don't agree with the situation, but you know what? They're going to write songs about necrophilia. So, you know, more power to them. It causes that little craziness. I also pass. <laughs> no necrophilia for me. <laughs> yeah. But like, like I said, I like Insane Clown Posse, all their music, but I don't think I'd ever... Actually, you know what? I take that back. I would go to a gathering of the Juggalos. You know why? I would go to a gathering of the Juggalos. We to witness it. I just want to. I just want to go. I just want to go and see it. You know what? We should go. Bottom class road trip, gathering of the Juggalos. Bam. Because I know, like, whenever whenever I, things I, are I allowed to happen, is just like you know, I I I. I could sing. I could sing a lot of ICP songs. Like they were my shit for a 
small change, you know? And then, like, I don't know, trying to relate to the other juggalo, like, two juggalos <laughs> made me go, like, oh, maybe I'm not a juggalo. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, yeah. I was willing to call myself a juggalo because I was an ICP fan, and then when I hung out with the juggalos, I was like, definitely oh. not it. That's not the... uh that's not my um shit. There are okay. there are pictures out there of me and my friend Jesse painted up like Shaggy Do Too Dope and Violent J. There are there are pictures of us that are face painted. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm yeah. I'm not gonna lie, there are photos out there. I don't have any of them, so one of these days they are going to appear. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I feel like there might be photos of me and my best friend also painted up <laughs> like Shaggy Too Dope and, uh, uh, during the time. But uh, do we still actually? You know, I was just thinking about this. Do you still? Does Mom still have the pictures of where I painted you and Deborah's faces like Queen Amidala? I don't think so because I feel like I would have seen them. She put all of her photos into her computer, you know, that one time. Yeah. I feel like I would have seen them. But I remember that so clearly. I remember you going, if you tell anyone that I did your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Google did. Like, not, that's probably not what I said, but I was just like, gotcha. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, I'm I mean, I'm excited to be spending time with my brother, and he's painting me like a princess. Fuck yeah! <laughs> and I mean, I think I did a pretty damn good job. I thought that turned you out did. pretty good. I remember it being amazing. Now that you could were just also in high school, and you were like, "I'm not about to be known for doing makeup." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this was not the time where that would be as a positive trait. It's like, okay, so th this this is going to put me down a little random train of thought. But yes, Maverick wants to see the Amidala pics too. And we'll have to see if the mom has them. But I was thinking about this, which I was kind of thinking we need to like come up with like a, we're going to go off on a liberal tangent or conservative tangent. Because, you know, I go both, I go both ways all the time. Um, double entendre, da da da. Uh, but I was thinking about we should have like a liberal alert and a conservative alert when I go on a tangent and we're about to go on one. So I was I was just thinking about this the other day in the shower. This is one of the, this is the thing that I was thinking about when then I got out of the shower and I forgot about it and I was like oh this should be a topic or just something to talk about. So I was thinking about like this whole thing about like gender normatives and all the stuff and you know I've kind of come to terms with my ridiculousness. I got my unicorn hat and all my other cat ears and all that stuff. And I, I don't give a shit. This is the shit I like. You know, fuck off if you don't like it. But I was thinking about so, do you remember when Kurt was little and he wanted to be Tinkerbell for Halloween? This is when he was he was probably about five or six years old at the time. And he really wanted to be Tinkerbell for Halloween. And my first thought was yeah, sure, fine. And then I thought, no, because if he dresses up at Tinkerbell for Halloween and his friends see him, it's going to be a disaster for him at school. Because it, it kicked back to a time when I was I was little. Because mom, if I said, mom, I wanted to be whatever for Halloween, she would make that costume. She made all of our costumes. She used to sew like, she used to sew like the wind. Like the Skeletor and Beastman costumes were great. You know, Mom was Skeletor, I was Beastman. And like she made some pretty good costumes for me as a kid. And I really wanted to be a cat. And because I had I had just got my first cat, little Sylvester. And then I and then I think I had little sweetie uh kitty. Little little yeah, sweetie, Katie, yeah. su sweetie Katie kitty or whatever the fuck I named her. And uh was I was all about <laughs> I hate it. I don't know how long Sweetie Kitty stuck around, but like, I remember like being in the bunk bed, like bottom bunk, trying to like 
hug her and she would just scratch the shit out of him. <laughs> remember being like, all right, fuck you, sweetie kitty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, those were some of my first pets other than Snowy. I had the Sylvester, Snowy, and Sweetie Kitty. I think I originally named it Katie, and then I just kept calling it Sweetie Kitty all the time. I had those cats, and so I really wanted to be a cat for Halloween. And I don't know if you notice, but you know, typically cat costumes were reserved for for girls. So, and also I was into the Cats the Musical at the time. Because I think Cats and Musical we had just seen recently. So I was I was all about it. But so mom made me this cool ass like black cat costume that had like a little bit of different colors to it. And it was like actual like furry, which I will say that cat costume was hot as fuck. But when my mom made it for me, I thought it was the coolest fucking costume ever. And painted my face up, you know, painted my nose black, did the whiskers, and the it was I, like I, they I gave me the like, yeah, I remember seeing the picture. Yeah, so I was all painted up as a cat, and then we went to the school where they were doing the Halloween carnival, and everybody just hated on me being a cat because I'm a boy and you're not supposed to dress like a cat. And it fucking ruined my Halloween. So as soon as so as soon as Kurt said he wanted to be Tinkerbell, my first thought was, I mean. Whatever you're in Tinkerbell, sure, whatever. I don't, it's you know, wasn't whatever. And then I thought, I don't want him to have to go through what I went through. So I was like, oh, Kurt, is there anybody else you want to be? And I remember what he ended up being that year for Halloween, anyways. And now to this day, I kind of feel bad that I didn't just let him be Tinkerbell. But you know what? I don't know if I made it up to him, but the when we went to Disneyland in 2019. He, he brought it up when we were walking through Disneyland and they had Tinkerbell cla- glass that had an etched Tinkerbell in there. So I bought Kurt one of these. I was, we were going to get it etched with his name in it, but it was going to take like, I don't know, three or four hours because there was a waiting list. And everybody was like, nah, we'll just, just give me the cup and let's go because I'm tired of the shit. So I got him a, a glass that has Tinkerbell on it kind of as a thing just to kind of make up for not letting him be Tinkerbell when he was a little boy. And it, it all came down to, because people are assholes and I got made fun of as a cat. Ugh. That still sticks with me yeah. to this day. Cat and, is an and, amazing thing. And to this day, I am still a dude with cats. I have far too many cats right now. Which, by the way, I got four kittens I need to give away. So, if anybody's in the chat... We also have four kittens I need to give away. <laughs> we got Why cats. Go. Oh, well. uh, we got we got plenty of cats to give away. So, if you just send us a DM. Uh, and you're in the Las Cruces, El Paso, Alamogordo, Deming. You know, if you're within a two-hour drive, I will deliver a fucking cat to you. <laughs> I know, same. Cat delivery. Because look, cat I, kitten. There. Yeah, I love I love cats, but I got too goddamn many. I know there's definitely a point where you go. If I have any more cats, I'm going to be found dead in a closet, like hanging. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm, I'm definitely reaching that limit. Like <laughs> right now, the the base amount of cats are supposed to be in this house is four. I have. I still have those two orange cats that I couldn't get rid of. So I actually have six cats I need to get rid of, but two of them aren't kittens anymore because nobody wanted to pick up the two cats. And then I got four. So I got six extra cats on top of my four regular cats. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of cats. Yeah, I got uh, got four. Four that are mine, and then I'm claiming, and I don't give a shit how many other cats are here. I have four cats. <laughs> They're the ones that I... I have two in the room right now that are sleeping like sweet, sweet angels. Yeah. Right now, just just my, just my a little Mal Mal is down here. Like I said, I was thinking I should get a little Mallory camera and just like put it right here on the edge of the table and shoot down and give the little Mallory update, see what she's doing. Right now she's sleeping in her little dog bed, all curled up, all cute like. 
But Mallory is the only animal that's allowed in the studio. Because she's the only one. Well, for one, Trippy's too big and he knocks all kinds of shit over. And uh, the cats, they can't be trusted. <laughs> they can't be trusted. No. Um, I trust... I trust one cat out of all my cats. Two cats, maybe. Yeah, like, I might let Officer Meow Meow Fuzzy Face or Princess Carolyn in here. Actually, probably just Officer Meow Meow, because Princess Carolyn just sheds, like, a maniac. One cat. I changed it back to one. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Meaning he's he's the only boy and he's iffy. Like if because I have girls who still go into heat, so that's always like a problem. But, oh, um, oh, Maverick wants the names of the cats. All right, my cats' names. Okay, I have Officer Meow Meow Fuzzy Face. I have Princess Carolyn from BoJack Horseman, and then I have. The orange cat, which is Lord Archibald Pumpernickel the third, and then there's Sadie. You can guess the three cats that I named. Lord Archibald Pumpernickel the third is probably the biggest sweetheart out of all my cats. He's the one that you know wants the most love. That's always curled up next to me when I go to sleep. But every time he comes in this room, he wants to spray my fucking curtain. He always pisses on my curtain. And then I have to take down the curtains and wash him because he's an asshole. That's why he can't be trusted. He can't be trusted. Cats pissing some... on curtains is like a... It's, a it's part of their religion. I, I think so. Out. Leave him because, alone. Because <laughs> I swear to God, if Lord Archibald Pumpernickel III comes into this room, he comes in here, pees on the curtain, and leaves. That's it. That is all he does. He comes in here to pee on my curtain, and then it's cat piss is horrible. Then I have to take down the curtains and wash them. If I keep the, because I have two male cats in the house, if I keep them together, they get in a pissing war with my curtains. <laughs> like, one will piss, and then the other one's like, oh, you just piss on those curtains? I'm going to go piss on those curtains. And I swear to God, if I don't have them together, they don't do it. <laughs> I have them in the room together. They just, I don't know what it is. They both, yeah, that's the same like, thing. You know I'm, gonna go pee. I'm gonna go pee on those curtains too. Because the other two orange cats that I haven't been able to get rid of, if Archibald, if Lord comes in here and pisses on the curtain, those two will come walking in here and I'm like, ah, and, I'm all, and I chase them off. Like, as soon as I see an orange face come towards the crack of the door, if I got the door open, nah, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. You're not going to piss on my curtain today. Because I love Balor with all my heart, but it's just like, I can't have both of you in here. Technically, you're not my cat. <laughs> both of you in here, it's just like you both feel the need like to go into some kind of pissing war on my curtains, but I, I, I can't. Oh, uh, fucking cats. <sighs> Well, but they're both fixed too, and it's just like that's no excuse. Like this territory <laughs> shit. I was gonna get the Lord Archibald fixed, and then COVID happened, and I haven't been able to get them fixed. I need to actually look in to see how much we get them fixed now that things are getting normalish. And then that way he'll quit getting Sadie pregnant, and then because once I get him fixed, I can get Sadie fixed. And then I just need to get rid of the other two cats. Maybe I'll get them fixed and see if I can rehome them. I don't know. Like, like I can't just like just take them to the pound or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just yeah. Yeah. I have too big of a heart. That's how I end up with all these fucking animals. Like Princess Carolyn. Like when Princess Carolyn came into my house, it's when I had Howard the Duck, Launchpad McQuack, and Darkwing Duck. Those were my three cats. And then uh, Mike's wife came over. This poor cat was like abandoned and was living in the, the hole of this wall. It had no top teeth. It was just this poor old cat. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll take her in. She can't live much longer. I'll give her a good life for the rest of her years. That was like three years ago. 
And this cat, every time she'll be laying there looking like it's about to die, goes another year. And then yeah. I have no idea where Officer Meow Meow Fuzzy Face came from. Nobody can tell me where this cat came from. For all I know, that cat was living in the attic of my old house before. Because all of a sudden, this cat shows up. Just shows up and didn't want to ever come near me. Just, you know, I tried putting it outside. I put it outside and it ran right back inside. And I'm like, what the fuck is up with this cat? I tried everything I could because I have no idea where it came from. I thought it was somebody else's cat. It just, it was just there. I mean, because I used to have a dog door too. So I don't know if that cat came into the dog door one day and decided this is home. I have no idea. No idea where it came from. And now she's here. Now she's here. I ended up with my babies because I had one cat, one cat. My sister had one cat named um, it's Asaya, but we call her Kitten. And oh, Deborah ended- did you give it an actual name? Yeah, Kitten's name is actually Asaya. Oh, I call well, that's her a- <laughs> That's a first for me. I've always known it was just yeah. Kitten. Oh, yeah. Now he's having so- dreams. Um. But yeah, I had a cat named Maria, and I uh, she had kittens. She had she had two sets of kittens. She had um, Deborah's first batch of kittens, which was Freya, the wee baby Seamus, um, Gandalf, and Nini Adia, and uh. That was her first thing. Deborah had them. And then um, she had a second batch. And then she just disappeared. Like, I don't know. I swear to God. And I, I know it sounds crazy. But I swear to God, I woke up one day. And I just started crying. And I was like, my cat's dead. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I had this feeling. And then I went outside and I kept calling for her. And I was calling for her and I was calling for her. And then I was just like, oh my God, something happened to her. And then she never came back. I don't know what happened to her. I don't know, but she was just gone. And then I had, she, I, she had had these kittens, so I had to take care of them. And so I ended up with four. Yeah. Four, four kittens. And I didn't want them. I didn't want them. Cause I, I just wanted my one cat, Aria. And I was gonna figure out what to do with these cats but then um you know when you have to feed something and like treat it like your baby you kind of like go didn't killer actually breastfeed those cats at one point no that was she no that wasn't because killer killer only had one batch of pups so yeah. she fed um either white cats or butterflies babies. Uh-huh. Cause she was, she fed, um, she, she was raised by cats. My yes. little chihuahua killer. Cause, um, we got her when she was just a little chunk. <laughs> like she looked like, I, I, at first I wanted to call her Brownie cause she was just, she was just a chunk, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> this brown chunk. And then, uh, I think Mandy suggested killer. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Well, because Killer did have that attitude. Do you remember when I used to pick her up and she just start growling at me? And yeah, yeah. she was she was like crazy. all you'd have to do is just pick her up and she'd be like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and then I'd set a bit and I just took her up. Then... She was but she loved me. This. Yeah, I I did that with static too, not that exact thing, but I would just go. Um, nom 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 and he would just go he would start to whine and then he would just like kind of like pretend to bite my face uh, oh I miss him so much but yeah anyway I'm starting to feel like this podcast is to be changed to pet talk <laughs> yeah killer was uh killer was raised by cats and uh she she got she got along really well with them and then when I think like at some point they realized holy fuck this is a dog like, okay maybe no 
Maybe get away from me. <laughs> well, it's funny because like Mallory's so small. Like Mallory is more of a cat than a dog, a hundred percent. Like even when she sleeps on top of the couch and everything else. Well, you've seen me like oh, I can put Mallory on my shoulders. Like she's 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 mama cats. You know, all the cats come and cuddle up with her. Like whenever she's laid on the bed, well, you you got the picture of me and my color coordinated fur pile with Mallory, Officer Meow Meow, Fuzzy Face, uh, Princess he Carolyn. Be, all of his cats match. Like they're not even from the same bloodlines. <laughs> He's got a, like a fashion collection of cats. Like it's amazing. And they match my bedding as well. Well, they used to. I have blue bedding now. Because I don't know if it was like a subconscious thing. I was like, oh, you know what? Because my bed was all the same color as all my pets. So I need to do something. So, but yeah, my 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 bedding and my pets all matched. <laughs> it was beautiful. I think I posted it on uh, TikTok or Instagram or one of those damn things. Oh, shit. Extreme just jumped in with a bunch of gifted subs. Thank you, Extreme. Look at that. Oh, bam. Gifted one tail subscriptions to. Oh. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five gifted subs. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you for jumping in and doing that. You did make it, sort of. You've missed a good chunk of our pet talk. We're actually, <laughs> we're almost done. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, hello. Hello. Dude, I'm, are we going to start having to do this podcast at 10? Because everybody jumps in at like, like, what time is it now? <laughs> oh, what's up? What up? My hat's off to you. Got Sully and uh, Eric was in here earlier. Sully and Joy. But yeah, so we were just, uh, we we're getting ready to wrap up. We just went on a whole spiel about our pets and we had our charity beers and yeah. Maverick was here at nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, Extreme just got out of a meeting. But I appreciate y'all jumping in here for the last few minutes. We just went on a whole spiel. We had booze in the news. We 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 did the review of our Janet's Bitchin' Brown, which is a charity beer from Icebox. Um, and these are really fucking good. These are a good ale. They're, they like have like initially they hit you with a really hoppy, that like hoppy piney taste. And then it kind of mellows out to just that regular kind of bitter beer. I think it's a solid beer. It is, it is tasty. And it's a beer for charity. What is better? Then drinking beer and giving back like you're getting drunk and you're doing a good thing. It balances out in the karma scale. You're getting, you're being selfish by drinking and doing your own thing. And, and you're helping those who are suffering through cancer. I've Dude, never thought like, seriously. I was going to go to heaven more. Definitely. I strongly recommend if you go to Ice House, get Janet's Bitch and Brown Ale. The proceeds go towards charity. It tastes good. Now, like I said, if you get the four pack, it is a little pricey. It's a microbrewery. So you're going to be paying a little bit extra for that premium. So I'm kind of breaking the bottom class rule. But it's for the community. It's for a good cause. 
You know, if you're going to break rules, at least do some good out of it. That's why you break rules to make things stronger and better. Like Martin Luther King. Like anyone who buys like drinks beer. Cesar Chavez. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're breaking rules unless you're like under 18, oh, if you're no. under 21. No, I mean, but, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Bringing change and cause into the community, that kind of crap. But if you're, you, you want to be selfish, I'm trying to jump in. <laughs> if, if you're trying to escape your reality by getting drunk, this is the way to do it. I'm just saying. It is fantastic. It's a fantastic brew. I, I'll buy it again. I still have two more for later. Yeah, I'm. I'm like one and a. Um, yeah, I would say sixty-eight. <laughs> well, yeah, I got. Well, I have. This is the second one, and then I got two more down here, for probably tomorrow night stream. Whatever I stream, a game or whatever the hell I decide to do, I don't know yet. I got ideas. Maybe I'll stream Rumu again. Maybe I'll try doing some different stuff with Rumu. I don't know. See if the story changes. Maybe I'll find something on Steam. I have no idea. But I'm going to stream something else tomorrow. And it'll be lots of fun. But, like I said, this, this beer is good. And then our booze in the news... It is okay to smoke weed and drink beer after you get your COVID, COVID vaccine, vaccine. As a matter of fact, it's encouraged to have a little bit of booze after your vaccine. It helps the immunity. Definitely get some. Shit. I don't know if I'd want to waste it on boiling brats in here. Well, I guess, you know, boil some brats and then drink the rest. I mean, I don't know. It's it, it's it, it's it's good beer. It's good beer. I like we discussed it earlier our concern with uh with doing the podcast I was like what if the beer sucks? How do I express that this charity beer tastes terrible? What do I do? <laughs> but no, nah, it was good beer. It's a good beer, you know. Mike tasted McDole, McDole. You did right, and your memory lives on in the best way possible. Through booze and giving back, what more could you ask for? But yeah, so we did that. We, we talked about our COVID vaccines. Uh, I went on a little, well, I talked about a COVID vaccine experience. And encourage people to get your COVID vaccine and go have a brewski afterwards. It's good for you. And then we went on a tangent about life, music, pets. You know, we, we got into a lot of stuff. If you want, you can watch it back on replay. Uh, it'll be being posted on YouTube uh, tomorrow evening. And I try to get all down. Get all put up. It's it was a fun podcast. I had no, nothing nothing in mind other than cheersing for charity and having a good time. I enjoyed it myself. Yeah, I'm familiar with the whole uh, beer and brat idea, but I'm just saying I'm really enjoying drinking it. And it's it's just it's brewed with love, so I just feel so kind and level-headed and just full of happiness. It is definitely something that you want to enjoy. Mm. I may do some gaming streaming tonight. I am not sure. I haven't figured it out. I've, I gotta go help the grandpa in the morning, so I will figure it out here in a little bit um, once we wrap up. Which will probably be here pretty shortly because we're at an hour thirty seven minutes. But I might be back here in a little bit. Gonna might play some games. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. It's I'm just, you know, just living life, just going where the wind takes me. You know, I'm the Reverend JP. You know, <laughs> I'm an Orthodox agnostic. 
which I traditionally don't know if there's God or not. Oh, yes. Our bouge in the news. <laughs> yes. So, like I said, too, though, this beer is a little bit more pricey because for the four pack, because I got two four packs and it was 25 bucks. So, but I mean, it's a microbrewery. Give them to charity. It's worth the expense. That's my thought on the thing. So, uh, Diane, do you have any last parting words before we uh, sign off for the night? Get the beer. It's tasty. And I don't know. I love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm the bathroom so bad. I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh, you've been holding off, holding the, the pee? I'm doing the potty dance in my chair, just, you know, trying to keep it. All right. So, let me pull up my banners. This has been Best of the Bottom. We're bottom class people drinking bottom shelf booze. You can find us at PericoProductions.com, which we have merchandise there. If you would like to donate to us and help us grow as a channel and as a family, we'd appreciate it. We have bigger projects coming along. We have links to all the social medias there. You can also find audio versions at Best of the Bottom at pod, Best of the Bottom .podbean.com. And please, if you're watching us on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, join the family, and we will see you next time. Tastes pretty good.